Well, I think it's a happy, happy day. Or is it happy, happy time? Well, whatever. I think it's just a great day to be together in Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us again when it comes to the Discipleship Empowerment Word. And we pray that tonight as we continue to look at this whole idea of the Kingdom of God, the Kingdom of Heaven, and of course Kingdom Ministry is what we talked about last night. And so we want to continue on today talking about moving from the Old Testament where we talked last night about Kingdom Ministry a little bit and then as we move into the New Testament. And tonight we're just going to focus on one particular book, the book of Matthew. Now Matthew is an I believe an exciting book. There's a lot that you can learn from Matthew because Matthew is coming from a Jewish particular background and so we need to look at what he's got to say and there's probably about 20-25 verses that Matthew talks about when it comes to the kingdom of heaven. Probably three or four verses when it talks about the kingdom of God and another again maybe four to five verses when it just talks about kingdom. But there was a reason I think that, that Matthew focused so much. Being a Jewish background, he focused on the kingdom of heaven. And maybe one of the reasons would be is because usually Jewish people did not like to use or verbally speak or write the name of God. And so you'll find in his particular book that he uses the kingdom of heaven more than the kingdom of God. But it does show up in other parts of the other scriptures over the period of time as we will study tomorrow and the next day. But I think I, tonight as we look at the kingdom of heaven, that's going to be our, mo our main focus, but not only our only focus from the book of Matthew. And I think Matthew saw something by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that, he, that God was trying to, through the book of Matthew, uh, really portray Christ as the king of the kingdom of heaven. I want to say that again. I think Matthew was trying to portray Christ and a very specific picture that would show him as king of the kingdom of heaven. And again, as you know, there was a lot of argument between uh, the life and afterlife between the Pharisees and the Sadducees. But here, I think Matthew, as we say, is saying, okay, I want to tell you about the kingdom of heaven. And because it's part of the gospel, the gospel book is also the good news about Jesus Christ. And what's the good news about Jesus Christ? He is the way, the truth, and the life. And he is the only way to get to and have the kingdom of heaven. You say, have? Yes, I believe you can experience part of the kingdom of heaven right now today in your own life. But also there is more about the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God, which is yet to come. And that's going to be a glorious day too. And so... Plus, we also talk about, when we look at the first two scriptures in Matthew, remember we said if two bear witness to one thing, it's how then it becomes binding. And I think it's interesting that the first two times it shows up in the book of Matthew, we have this whole area of, first of all, John the Baptist saying this profound statement in Matthew chapter 3, verse 2. And I hope that you will underline this one and the next one because they're both profound statements. It says, In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. And now here's this, this statement. And he and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Isn't it interesting? He says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know, he could have said, repent for the Messiah is at hand. Repent for Jesus Christ is at hand. But he doesn't say that. He says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And what does that mean? I believe what it means is that the kingdom of heaven, Jesus Christ was now walking in their midst. And the reason why I say that, then we got to bear testimony to that again. How do we bear testimony of that? It was, well, look at some other parts of the scriptures. And what does it say? Well, it's interesting, as soon as you go over into chapter 4, after Jesus is going through the temptation in chapter 4, where uh, Satan offers him in the third part of the temptation, the kingdoms of the world. And of course, he's taking scripture out of context, and he's trying to offer something that Jesus Christ already had. 
And that's what Satan, see, Satan was the prince of this air, but he was not the king of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus Christ was that. He was sent as the son of God and the son of man, but he was also the king of the kingdom of heaven. And so he was already king over the kingdoms. And that's what Satan couldn't get. He says, again, he says, the devil took him up to exceedingly high mountain and showed him the kingdoms of the world and, and their glory and said to him, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Well, talk about conceited and full of pride and ignorance. He's asking Jesus to fall down in front of him. And if he would do that and worship Satan, he would give him all the kingdoms. Not realizing all the kingdoms were already Jesus's. And he didn't have to do anything to receive it. He already was king of it. And then there was a say, with the bear witness to what John the Baptist said, then you go further on after the temptations into John chapter 4 verse or Matthew chapter 4 verse 17 and listen to what Jesus says this is what Jesus says from that time this is just after his temptation from that time Jesus began to preach and to say for the kingdom of heaven is at hand so now we have John the John the Baptist bearing testimony of that and remember you needed two testimonies now we got Jesus himself bearing testimony and standing up and saying to the people after he was gone through this, this temptation experience and was victorious over the enemy, he now stands up and says to the people, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What some amazing thoughts. And I think that as we looked into the Old Testament last night, we talked about just the kingdom. But as we move into the New Testament, we see that the kingdom of heaven has now come to earth. And as we continue on, we're going to see that the kingdom of God, Christ, will take us to that place one day. Then over in Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, we are into the Beatitudes. And the Beatitudes, the first Beatitude says, Blessed are the poor, those who are poor in spirit, maybe even poor physically, poor mentally. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. There it is again. Jesus is standing up within a few hours of each time saying, you know, bless them, those who are poor in spirit, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Then again, just a little further on in that chapter, he's then beginning to teach a little bit more about how he has come to fulfill the law. He says, Whosoever therefore breaks one of, le of, the, of the least of these commandments and teaches men so, shall not call called least in the kingdom of heaven but whoever does and teaches them he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven so he's saying those who oppose the teachings of god you will be nothing when it comes to the kingdom but those who honor the teachings of god you will be called great in the kingdom of heaven and the idea of kingdom of heaven is used twice there in that same verse then when the Jesus, when the disciples came to Jesus they said Jesus you know we see that you do a lot of praying and will you teach us how to pray and it's interesting that when he teaches them how to pray as what we call known as the Lord's Prayer or some people will call it the disciples prayer whichever over in Matthew chapter 6 we see again that he starts off in verse 9 our Father in heaven Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. And then as it gets down towards the end of the prayer, after he says, but deliver us from the evil one, for yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So twice he uses the word kingdom. You know, your kingdom come. And not only your kingdom come, but your power of your kingdom and the glory of your kingdom has also come. So we have the kingdom of heaven coming to this earth. Then in 633, he goes on and says to and encourages us, you know, when he talks about this whole area, don't be worried or full of fear. And a lot of people are worried and full of fear today. And the reason why they're worried and full of fear, I think a lot of times because they've lost focus concerning Jesus as the king 
of the kingdom of heaven, which is here on earth. He says in verse 33, but seek ye first. Seek ye first what? What is he asking us to seek? To seek him? To seek all these other things? No, he says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. So he's continuing on to say that if you, as you continue to seek God, as you continue to follow after me, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God is at your uh, beckoning. It's at your very presence. Then over in 7, uh, 21, he goes on, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Now, this was the opening statement that Jesus gave to, to the parable concerning the wise builder. You had the wise builder and you had the foolish builder. And he talks about that the wise builder is the one who builds his house upon the rock. And what is the rock? It's Jesus Christ. And what does Jesus Christ represent? The kingdom of heaven. So he's saying to these religious leaders, you're calling me Lord, Lord. But you don't even know what you're saying. You're, you're not even committed to my lordship, he's saying. You're calling me Lord, Lord as words, but you don't mean what you're really saying. Because if you called me Lord, Lord properly, that the kingdom of heaven is at your disposal. It's there. Shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does not do the will of the Father. So by being connected to Jesus Christ, being connected in prayer, we get connected to the kingdom of heaven, which then the Lord's Prayer tells us that concerning the kingdom of heaven, that when we get connected to the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, we then begin to find out what the Lord's will is for our life. And when we find out what the Lord's will is, we're able to carry it out. And that's what the exciting part is. Again, in Matthew chapter 8, verse 11 and 12, he says, and I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. See, Jesus was trying to say to the Jewish people, you know, you guys should have got all this, well, what Abraham was talking about, what the promises of Abraham, all these things that were talked to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob concerning the kingdom of heaven. He says, there's going to be people that are going to sit down in the kingdom of heaven that you're going to be surprised about, and the ones who you think should be there won't be there because they've got their eyes on something else. Then over in Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, as Jesus speaks about compassion, he says, Then Jesus went about the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. I believe that's why part of the Great Commission in Luke and Mark and John talks about that we can do the things that Christ did because Christ was representing the kingdom of heaven and now we're representing the kingdom of heaven and we can also do what he has called us to do. Because we are connected with the King of Heaven. See, we, we need to grasp, well, we'll get that more tomorrow night and the last night, that as, as ambassadors, you're an ambassador of what? You're an ambassador of the Kingdom of Heaven. You're being sent forth here on earth to be part of the Kingdom of Heaven. Amen? Isn't that exciting? Then he goes on, not only are we to preach the Gospel of the Kingdom, to start telling people about kingdom. Kingdom living, kingdom blessings, kingdom everything, I think is out there for us. And I know there are some people that take in this kingdom theology and bent it one way and bent it another way. And so we become afraid of it often, of this whole idea. But there's still truth there, even though some other people have twisted it and turned it. There's still truth there that we can grasp hold of when it comes to the kingdom of heaven. He goes on in 10.7, he says, then you shall, And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out the demons freely. You have received, 
What have you received? You have received Jesus Christ, but you've received the kingdom of heaven. Freely you have received, now freely give. Give what? Give healing. Give whatever needs to be given. Wow, isn't that wonderful? Give whatever needs to be given. He says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Do whatever. And I've had the opportunity to do some of those things around the world. And it's true. It's true. God will use us to do it. I've seen people healed. I've seen people have demons cast out of them. I've seen all kinds of things in my journey. And I believe it's because I've been part of God's family and part of the kingdom of heaven. But then again, he warns us that, that because the kingdom of heaven is here, but there's others that are going to war against the kingdom of heaven. He talks about in, in uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 12, he says, And for the days of John the Baptist, until now the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violence take it by force. There is going to be people that are going to try to rise up. And I see it coming. It's on the horizon. There's people, because of what's going on in our world right now, there is going to be a tremendous backlash against Jesus Christ and his children. There is going to be things that are going to come against the kingdom of heaven. And we need to be prepared for that. We don't need to fear it because we worship the king of the kingdom of heaven. And he has given us all authority and power. Then again in Matthew chapter 12. There's quite a few here. In 12. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them. Every kingdom is divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself will not stand. So they were accusing Jesus. Oh you, you belong to the kingdom of the devil. And Jesus saying, you know, you guys, I don't know where you get your theology from. He's, I, mean, I think he's thinking, he doesn't say that, but that's the way I would say it. Because he's saying, does, does, does the Satan cast out Satan? Do demons cast out demons? The answer is no. Jesus was at war against the kingdom of this world. At war against Satan and his demons. And he took authority over it. He is not divided. It's He is here to destroy the works of the devil. Then in 1228, he says, But I cast out demons by the Spirit of God. Surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Wow. What a powerful word to say to the Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes. He's saying, you don't get it. But the kingdom of God has come upon you. And matter of fact, he, he didn't say this, but I think he was he could have said it. He's standing right in front of you. So be careful how you speak about the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. He goes over in Matthew chapter 13, verse 11. He says, And he answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it has not been given. And he's talking about this parable of, of uh, sowing and reaping. And that he's speaking to them concerning this. And then he goes on, and explains it in 13.11 or 13.19 uh, where he says, when, the, when anyone hears these words of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in the heart. Then, then this is he who receives seed by the wayside. So he's speaking about the four seeds and, and, and uh, he's saying, unfortunately, the seed, what is the seed? The kingdom of heaven. Those are the seeds that are being planted. And what is, what is on the wayward side? Birds come along and snatch it away. Steal it. So that, that, that plant doesn't get a chance to germinate. That seed doesn't get a chance to germinate. And what's that seed that needs to germinate is that we are part of the kingdom of heaven. 1338, he goes on and talks about it a little bit more. About the parables and the, and the tares. He says, the field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the terrors are the sons of the wicked one. The good seed are sons of the kingdom. Whose kingdom? The kingdom of heaven. Who is the king of the king of the heaven? Jesus Christ. Christ the Messiah, Jesus the Savior. 
That's who he is. Then, probably one of my favorite verses, this is a verse that touched my life when early in my ministry, is in John 16, 19, where Jesus says to Peter, let's go up to verse 18, and I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Then verse 19, And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And this was the verse that the Lord gave to me when I was 18, just got newly married to Irene. We went to a motel room. I was praying. I was struggling with sins of my past. And God cleansed me and washed me, gave me a tremendous vision of healing in that. And then a moment after he healed me and delivered me of those things, he gave me this verse and said, Jim, I want you to know that you can take authority in my name that whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And I've used that throughout my ministry on many, many people. People say there's no that, such thing as God. And I said, would you mind if you allow me to loosen some things upon you? Or do you want to be bound up some things that need to be bound up? I use these as prayer pillars in my life all the time. Then in 16, 28, it says, As surely I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. I believe the kingdom of Jesus was amongst us. Then Jesus went back up to heaven to prepare a place for us, and he intercedes on behalf of us. He's in the kingdom of God at this time, but he will return back for his children to bring us back into his kingdom. 18.3 says of Matthew, And said, As surely I say to you, unless you are converted and come as a little child, Unless you have simple faith in me, in Jesus Christ, and in God, you will be no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, humble whoever humbles himself as a little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Look at that. The greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I didn't even mark that one. I'm going to get my pen and mark that one. Didn't even see that one. <laughs> the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. That's our God. If we become childlike faith and come to the Lord, He is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Oh, Matthew's not finished yet. He continues to talk about this whole idea of the kingdom of heaven. He says in, in, in Matthew chapter 19, verse 14, But Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of heaven. I know some of you are watching tonight, and I won't say who, but you do children's ministry. That's kingdom ministry. You know, we underestimate. I've seen and heard and read about revivals that God can bring about in, with children's lives. I've seen children. I've started, I, I started a church in Port Stanley on the, in, in, in Ontario, and it was based on children's ministry. And as we led the children to the Lord, and as they got a hold of the kingdom of God, you know what they did? They went home and led their parents to the Lord, and they came and got baptized. You know, this whole idea of the ministry to the, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them. Be careful, do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of heaven. For such is. It doesn't say will be. It is the kingdom of heaven. If we just come to him in simple faith. I don't know about you. I get so excited about that. Well, I just took another book down to get laid out today. And it's, a, and it's a, another children's book. And I'm just so excited what God has laid on my heart to write and to put together as a children's book. As a children's curriculum. Dealing with the I am's of Jesus from John. And I believe that children have an important ministry. An important ministry. And that's why when I go and visit homes and that, I love to spend time with children. <laughs> I even called someone yesterday, a friend of mine and that, and I said, uh, oh, he said, hi, how's it going, uh, James? I said, it's great, Nat. He says, what are you up to? And I said, you know, before we get talking too much, can I, can I spend some time with your, talking to your son on the phone? Oh, sure. 
<laughs> and I spent 15, 20 minutes talking to his son. His son has just gone through tremendous uh, hospital time and struggling with uh, all kinds of chemotherapy. And God has brought him through the other side. And now he's healthy. And, and uh, I just wanted to encourage him. Because that's he is part of the kingdom of heaven. Amen? So we just visited, had a great visit. And just shared about the goodness of God. You know? So in verse 23... He says, Then Jesus said to the disciples, As surely I say to you, that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. So here is twice we get now the combination of the kingdom of heaven. You know, I believe it's hard for people when they have a lot of wealth and, and their wealth is... is blinded them to the things of Jesus Christ. And it's hard for them to see the kingdom of heaven. And because they can't get a hold of the kingdom of heaven, they can't get a hold of the kingdom of God. That's the challenge that they face. And we need to help them. And sometimes that's where they get swallowed up into. Then, we keep going. Got a few more verses. Not a lot of time, but a few more verses. Matthew 21, 43. Where he talks about, therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruit of it. And again, Jesus is saying about certain people who should have known better, who should have known about the kingdom of God, it's going to be taken to you and given to others. And we are part of those who it has been given to. And then Jesus then, as we move along towards the end of Matthew, starts connecting with this kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God and the kingdom ministry all towards the end times. In chapter 24 of Matthew, it says, For the nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms, and there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places. There's going to be all kinds of things that are going to happen, and the, those kingdoms here on earth are not going to be able to help us. They're going to lose all control of what they have. And in the last days, the only kingdom we need to get focused on is the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Not the kingdoms of this world, not the prince of this world, not the Antichrist, nothing that this world offers is going to help us to be able to walk through. But focusing on the kingdom of Jesus Christ, Him as King of kings and Lord of lords, we will, through His strength and through His power, be able to overcome. Then in Matthew 25, 34, He says, Then the King will come and, and to those on the right hand. Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you and from the foundations of the world. Again, there is this separating of the people and those, the sheep and the goats, and there is a dividing up. But he said, those of you who are on the right, be blessed of my Father and inherit the kingdom. What a day that will be. What a day that will be. And then our final verse in the book of Matthew he says, But I say unto you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. This is the communion service where Jesus said, Yes, the kingdom of heaven has walked amongst you. I've been the bridge between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. And there's a day coming when I'm coming back again to receive you unto myself and take you back to the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. And we're going to gather around and we are going to partake together of the marriage supper of the Lamb. And at that time, we will celebrate the wonderful blessings of what Jesus Christ has done in our lives. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have brought us to the place that we can experience here on earth your kingdom, your anointing, your blessings. And I pray, O oh God, that we will be involved in kingdom ministry, that we will go out and tell people that they need to repent for the kingdom of heaven 
is at hand and that has not changed for 2,000 years. It's still at hand. It's still available for all. So whosoever will may come to the kingdom of heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so Father, I just thank you for the opportunity to share this word. Bless it to our bodies. Strengthen us and encourage us with it now in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. I hope that you've got some encouragement that you're part of the kingdom of heaven. Let me know if you want to share a little bit about it, but we just love being with you every night. And I just hope that today you're going to experience a little bit more of our King and His kingdom in your life. Amen. Love you. God bless you. And Lord willing, we will see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.